thirteen point three making predictions with theoretical probability so we're going to make predictions i can make predictions using the theoretical probability so this is just like when we did experimental probability and actually making inference inferences with um surveys so there's no new t key terms so that's really nice all right so we have a standard number cube we're going to roll it 150 times we want to predict how many times you will roll a three or a four so the first thing we have to do is find the probability of rolling a three or a four. So on a cube, there's six sides, right? So that's the total. Remember how the bottom's always the total? And on a cube, there's one three and there's one four, so that's a total of two possibilities. We always reduce, so let's divide this by two, and we're gonna get one third. Now that we have our theoretical probability, right, we can use it. One third equals how many out of 150? Okay, just like uh, when we did experimental probability, we have to use a proportion. So we're going to cross product, 3 times x is 3x, 1 times 150, 150, one step equations divide by 3. We get x equals 50. So we predict 50 times a 3 or a 4. All right. Cecilia volunteers at her local animal shelter. She has an equally likely chance to be assigned the dog, cat, bird, or reptile section if she volunteers 24 times about how many times should she expect to be assigned to the dog section? So let's first find the probability of the dog section. So there are four sections. One, two, three, four. That's our total. Dog is just one of them. Well, what's really nice is we don't have to reduce this. That's our theoretical probability of being in the dog section. So we're gonna use this now. One over four is how many out of 24? So cross product, 4x equals 24, right? 4 times x, 1 times 24, divide by 4, we get x equals 6. So we're going to say 6 times in the dog section. There's our final answer. Okay, so we got Herschel here. He's pulling socks out of his drawer without looking and puts them on. Um, his socks are not matched. Those are his single socks. He takes one single black sock. That's the first one. Now, there are seven black socks, eight white socks, and five striped socks left in the drawer. He pulls out a second sock without looking. Is it likely, remember likely has to be close to one, more than a half, that he will be wearing matching socks to school? So let's find the probability of matching black socks. So we know there's seven socks that are black left over, right? There's seven of them. We need to know how many we have total. So total socks is seven plus eight plus five. So eight and seven are 15 plus five is 20. So that goes here. It's seven out of 20. So if we think back to our very first lesson on probability, we had Zero was impossible. Unlikely was between zero and a half. And then we had as likely as not, which was a half exactly. And then likely. And likely was bigger than a half, but less than one. So is seven more than half than 20? 
It is not more than half of 20. So we would say no. It is unlikely that he will get a matching sock. No. Herschel is probably going to be wearing not matching socks. So that's another way we can make predictions with these. We don't actually have to solve a proportion. We can just use the theoretical probability to make decisions based off of our probability. All right, all 2,000 customers in a gym are randomly assigned a three-digit security code that they use to access their online account. The codes are made up of the digits zero through four. So that means they can have zero, one, two, three, or four. Okay, and the digits can be repeated. It is likely, is it likely that fewer than 10 of the customers are issued the code 103? So we have three digits. Okay, three digits. Okay, we have one, one code we're talking about, right? Okay, we want to find out what the probability of getting code 103 is. This is what we're trying to figure out. So we first need to figure out how many total possibilities are there, right? Like how many codes do we, how many do we even have? So in this first one, the probability of getting a one, right, that's what we want to find for this first one, is only one. There's only one one, but there's five total. Well, they can, so then the next one, I want to get a zero. Zero goes here. That's only one, but there's still five numbers to choose out of because I can repeat my numbers. Then I'm looking for a three. Okay, well there's only one time that I can get, the only one number can go there, it's three, but there's still five numbers I can choose out of. So to find out how much there is, we multiply them. So one times one times one is one. Five times five is 25, but then we're gonna times it by five again. That is one out of 125. That's our probability of getting the code 103. So this is kind of like more like our compound events where we have more than one thing happening. So we have to find the probability of each and then put them together. Okay find the probability of each, and then put them together. So now that we have the probability of getting that code, we're going to use it like our proportion. So we're going to go 1 over 125 is equal to x over 2,000. All right, cross product. This would be a good place to pause and see if you can cross product this on your own and see if you can get these correct. So we're going to get 125x equals 2,000, so that's really nice, right? That multiplying should be easy, but we're going to divide here. I still have said that you could use a calculator, and so you can divide it with a calculator, and we're actually going to get x equals 16. So we're predicting that 16 people will be assigned that code. So if I say 16 and they want to know if it's fewer than 10, is that likely? No. Not likely. Because I have already
already more. I'm predicting that more than 10 are going to receive that code of 103. OK, so the main things to remember is first, find the theoretical probability. A really bad N. There we go. Find the theoretical probability second make the prediction. So we cannot even do our predictions until we have that probability, okay? So no predictions until after the probability. So here's your um, independent practice to try it out yourself. During a raffle drawing, half the ticket holders receive a prize. The winners are equally likely to win one of three prizes. A book, a gift certificate to a restaurant, or a movie ticket. Three prizes. If there are 300 tickets sold, predict the number of people who will win a movie ticket. Okay, remember only half of them will win. Half of them will win three prizes. All right, until next time.